Hello and welcome to another This Week in Linux Distro Review. So today I'm looking at Sabion 5.3's KDE version. Just came out a couple of weeks ago and I've had a little while to look at it, so let me give you my opinions on it. Alright, so let's go ahead and start up my old Gen 2 machine. Now as you'll see here, when it came up, it actually took up the entire screen. That's because by default, Sabion installs with the VirtualBox tools. Now I'm going to go ahead and resize this once we get in there, and I will run those VirtualBox tools to force it to resize. So now that we're logged in and it's taking up way too much of the screen, I can hit Alt F2 and run console. And in here I can type sudo vbox client dash dash display. And there we go, it just automatically resized. I love the VirtualBox edition and the fact that it's installed by default is very nice. It would be kind of nice if it would auto start at least the display part of it. Like I've said before, VirtualBox 3.2 doesn't capture the mouse anymore, so that's not a big deal. It's the VirtualBox resizing that would be nice to have by default, and it is included, so just it's one of those things I would like to see, but it's not really a, a killer or anything. So this is Sabion 5.3 KDE version, and out of the box you'll see here Firefox starts up and it shows you the Sabion 5.0 website where you can get involved in the community, you can learn a little bit more about it, uh, enjoy it looking through the screenshots, looking through the community and the documentation, communicate with them through their wiki and other lots, lots of great information there. It also tells you you've updated your version of Firefox. That is because right after I installed Sabion, it has to update and it had 150, 200, something like that updates, two gigs of updates after the first install. It's been out two weeks now, I think. I'll just remind you of that. So two gigs of updates in that amount of time says they are working a lot on this. So we've got some notification applets down here in the right. This is a default KDE install. As you'll see here, it comes with a custom wallpaper for Sabion. And if you go into the desktop settings, you can go through here and look at some of the other desktops it comes with. A lot of them very decent looking. Uh, they're not going to look quite right on this because I've got it at a really odd resolution, but let's just pick one and take a look at it. Lightning. That looks fun. Apply. And there you go. Very seamlessly transitions over to that. Very cool. But we'll go back to the Sabion just for fluidity's sake. So on your desktop here, you've got the option to donate to Sabion. Very kind of cool that they're they're adding that there. Just in case you want to give back, get live help. I like that. Let's take a look at it. This actually takes you to sabionlinux.org/chat, which has an embedded IRC client going to the free node chat room, the Sabion chat room on there. You see, there's also an ad here, so they do get to make a little bit of money off of it as well. You've got your Sulphur there, so Sulphur is actually what you will use to install new software. You'll see here by default it shows you notices from the repositories. If you click on one of those, it'll give you a little bit of information. If you're having download problems, it could be caused by being out of date. So nice to have that, just lets you know if anything's going on that might be quirky. But by default it shows you all of the applications that you have installed. It will tell you if you have any updates here. It allows you to search for new applications to install. Let's try record my desktop. I do enjoy searching for that because I use it so often at this point. And you'll see there it came up with GTK, QT, and just the plain record my desktop. If I go ahead and double click and hit install, it'll say I have to install these two packages instead of one. Okay, that's fine. It's three megs of space. Not a big deal. And now that we've told it to do that, let's hit the install button and tell it to commit. This is really a little bit more difficult than I think it should be, but I've gotten really I've gotten a little bit lazy when I use other distributions, so just my opinion, don't take that as a as a really negative for it. Now since I hadn't mentioned it before, Sabion is actually based on Gentoo. Now you saw my Gentoo review a couple of weeks ago, mainly I did complain a little bit about how long it takes to do everything, how everything has to be custom compiled for your kernel. In this case, it does it all for you. It is already pre-compiled, so that saves you a ton of time. And there we go. In a little under a minute we have that application installed if I go into the menus now it should be available under applications multimedia GTK record my desktop very cool so looking back at the desktop we also have a world of goo demo that's an extremely fun game if you haven't tried it and the Xbox Media Center let's just see what happens if I run the Media Center inside of a virtual machine starts off very nicely but because it doesn't have the 3D acceleration and everything working well, it's not going to quite function appropriately. 
All right, that didn't turn out as well as I would like. Just the 3D acceleration is not there in VirtualBox for me. I've actually got the open source ATI drivers on my machine, so I'm not even going to worry about that. That is an available option, and actually if you're installing from the CD, it gives you that option if you just want to do an Xbox Media Center. Here in the upper right, we've got the Add Activity Add Panel, all the standard KDE stuff. The bottom right, we've got the rest of the standard KDE stuff, the panel applications, panel applets. So you've got a battery monitor, a little bit odd to see it show up on every single desktop, but in my, in my experience I normally do turn it on whatever machine I'm on, so very handy. Here you have your updater by default, so you can check for updates, you can use packages web interface or launch the website. So it does have a lot of options there for the updater if you want to use that. Let's take a look at the menu. So by default we're using the kickoff application menu. We can switch to the classic if we want to, but I'm going to just walk you through it very quickly. You see on the favorites we've got a lot of applications by default. You've got Copete Instant Messenger, you've got Conversation IRC Client, uh, Media Players, Word Processors, it comes with the full open office suite of course. Under your applications list you've got a bunch of different Sabion links. These are going to different download locations, help forums, shopping for Sabion stuff. Let's look in the Sabion shop and just see. Takes you to a broken Cafe Press link. That's probably something they're working on. I, I'm not concerned that they don't have a functional shop at the moment. So looking under development, we've got QT development applications, perfectly apt considering that we are in a KDE environment. Under games, you've got different categories of games, lots of different games. Feel free to download it and look at those yourself, or just take a look at this. It's in high definition, so it shouldn't be hard to see what they are. Bunches of different games. So under graphics, we've got a few graphics applications. I do not see GIMP in there, which is a little bit surprising. Under internet, we've got a feed reader. Again, we mentioned the IRC and Instant Messenger. Dial-up internet tool, that's about 10 years out of date. We've got Bluetooth application, Firefox, network attachment, and web page creation using OpenOffice Writer. Multimedia has that CD player, media players, disc burning, media center with Xbox, video player with Dragon Media Player. I've heard a lot of people enjoy that player. Under Office, we've got Open Office stuff mixed with some KDE stuff. You've got Contact for your Information Manager and Organizer. Under your Settings, you've got Authentication, Date and Time, Menu Updating. Sulfur is, of course, the most important one for a lot of people, being able to update your software, install new software very easily. Users and Groups, of course, you can add new users. Under the System, you've got, again, Authentication and the Repository Manager, which should make it easier to add and remove repositories as you see fit. Drop-down terminal. I am a big fan of drop-down terminals. Let's take a look at this one. Yeah, Quake has been started. If you hit F12 now, it pops down and gives you this little terminal you can use at any time. You can also close out of it by hitting the X and it will go away entirely. Or you can add new sessions to it. Very handy if you just want to one-click, there's a terminal, do some stuff and get to it. Like I've said before, I'm a huge fan of the terminal, so that is a, a big plus for me to see by default. Back under here you have a disk utility, you've got a file manager, of course Dolphin, your information center that gives you all your hardware information, your network manager, which your network manager, which is a kind of a surprise to see by default, but a lot of a lot of distros are going to K Network Manager now. The ability to manage your printing, to resize and rotate your screen, another user manager, which is a little bit odd, but you'll see here it actually gives you a graphical user manager, the KDE based user manager. You've also got a disk usage analyzer, kind of like the one that would come in GNOME, but it is, of course, KDE-based. Under your utilities, you've got a lot of utilities in there. Network Manager, again, there's a lot of redundancy in this. I'm not really sure about all that. And finding files and folders and help, that's just standard stuff. Under your computer, a lot of standard places. Recently used, again, standard stuff here, just the recently used stuff. And leave. And that is actually where the recording cut off on me for some reason. Luckily, I had just finished talking, so not a big deal. Basically, Sabion is a very decent distribution. It's got a pretty decent community behind it. After I did my Gentoo review, Juiced Op, a contributor for Sabion and Gentoo, actually came into my chat room and talked to some of the guys and helped fix some bugs, some problems that we were having. So, very nice community. Looks like the documentation is pretty good, got a pretty good community behind it. So, if you have the time, download it, give it a shot. Worst case scenario, you can try it as an Xbox Media Center. But that's all for me from now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>